inshallah. So we're, di we're dissecting this video that has triggered a lot of pe some people and caused some controversy. And we've discussed it. It was pulled off. We're making the, the objective of this video is to make it clear to those who want to listen. I mean, I don't know. I don't even know if most of the people are going to get past the you know five minute mark of this video. <laughs> I mean, and that's reality. If you look at statistics, okay, at the videos, I mean, seven minute mark is like, man, you know, if people get past the seven minutes, it's like, boom, which means most of the people already might have turned out by now and already made some kind of idea as to what they want to believe. The Red Bull movement made me realize that Islam is the truth because um, I'm only practicing since two years now and Alhamdulillah and the Red Bull movement showed me what it means to be or to have Roma, the specific gender roles and how it fits to um, repairing the society again. When you are saying that women are, or that it is sunnah to marry women and it is no more a taboo, right? And I don't mean look down upon divorcees, no. But what I'm saying is don't normalize it. Because when you normalize it, women are going to find it extremely easy to get divorced and the children are going to be affected, right? Because they're going to say, well, I'm just going to find another man who is going to take care of my children. Now, if you are in an abusive relationship and your children are being affected by that abusive relationship, then you have, you know, the excuse, right? This is to like all the people who were just tripping out. All right. Y'all need to get your emotions in check. And I say that with love. Y'all need to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your peace. Because listen, us apologizing, someone apologizing is not going to calm your emotional turmoil. If you are feeling emotionally reactive because someone says something, listen, you need to take a step back. And you need to analyze why you feel so emotional about this. There is a reason why you feel so emotional. Get to the root, make dua, pray salah, go to the creator first. And then you know what? If you still have an issue, reach the certain individual who said said thing in private and then have a discussion so that you can have clear understanding versus leaving a comment on a YouTube channel or on a TikTok or something like that basically spreading fitna. Let me make it simple, okay? Because I think the main problem that we're discussing here, and I would say, I didn't look at all the comments, but I would say it was probably the women who got upset were divorced women themselves. There's, I, I cannot question his intention, bro. I cannot, you know what I mean? I, I really, I, it would be very unfair to say that his intention was wrong. Okay, he's uh, from what I've seen. And I've only looked at one proper podcast, which is yours, what I've seen there, I know he has other issues, but I, I don't think he's a bad man. I think he has a bad past, maybe. Don't we all? Okay, the only thing is that he's been out about it and exposed, maybe, and in you know, the light. I mean, if a lot of people would have a screen above their head to tell, you know, all the story of their life and what they've done, I think we'll be all in the same position. You know, I don't want to, to take it on the brother. This is my sincere advice to him and all the Muslims always go back to Allah and his messenger. Take it back to Allah and his message. Take it back. At least try your best when you say something to try to have evidence. It's he's only focused on benefiting men. And there seems to be more of a focus on almost really downplaying women in the sense that, you know, don't go for this woman. Don't go for, like a lot of what he says, um, it really looks at this whole um, Western woman as a concept and applies it to Muslim women as well. And as we know, there's two, I would say, oxymoronic things. Two things I disagree with. One is you saying Western women are oxymoronic to Muslim women. Yes, in ideology. Yes, the way Allah has designed them. But that's not reality, bro. Reality is Western women are bleeding into the identities of Muslim women whether we like it or not. So we can't be sitting out here being like, okay, we're going to use 1400 years ago rules. I'm not saying Islam is outdated. Islam's eternal. But what I'm saying is we can't be expecting that all women today and all men today are the way we should be based on the Quran and Sunnah because modernism has bled into us. So that's the first thing. The second thing is... <laughs>
Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to the Realist Podcast in the Dunya, the three Muslims, where we are joined here with three very special guests, Gabriel, Sister Wad, and Sister Jannat. Assalamu alaikum. All right. So before we get into this, quickly, how did you guys find the podcast? Sister, you go first. <laughs> um, my name is Wad. I was raised in South Africa. I am originally Sudanese and currently living in Saudi Arabia. And I found your podcast. A friend of mine actually sent me uh, your videos, and it was very recently. It was like two weeks ago or something like that. She sent me your video with uh, Dr. Omar Zay, and I was so excited because I was reading his book, um, Islam in the Shadows, of the New World Order at that time. And so it was really exciting to see the author right there in front of me. And it was a really good video. And it, to me, honestly, because I'm surrounded by many, um, what could I say, ignorant Muslims, right? So I was watching the video and to see such intellectual and woke Muslims, for me, it's, it's, really, it's really wholesome. So I immediately watched some of your other podcasts and I, I just really love this um, channel. And I'm honored really to be here. Thank you guys for having me here. Likewise, likewise. Thank you for being here. Um, so, Bismillah. Um, I'm Janet, 27. Um, originate, uh, originated in Bosnia Herzegovina. So, I was born and raised in Sarajevo and came after the war to Germany, to West Germany. Um, yeah, I'm a, a freelancer, translator, and an editor. And um, me and my sister, or my sister and me, <laughs> we launched a uh, publisher two months ago. So quick uh, advertisement here right now. So if you want to uh, get the proper Islamic education, go to Imthabit Falak uh, on YouTube. So um, yeah, how I find you guys, um, I have found you through Angel. He had this video uploaded uh, from removing his tattoos and speaking about it and being very spiritual. And I Kind of relate to his journey to Islam, Alhamdulillah, and um, yeah, here we are. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So, despite the controversy, despite the heat, we are now joined together at the round table about two weeks after we dropped an episode with the notorious Mahdi Tajani. What up, bro? Hmm. You, didn't, you didn't give Gabriel a chance to introduce himself. Uh, I'm pretty sure, bro. At this, at this point, we should just change our name to the four Muslims because everyone knows who Gabriel is. May Allah, may Allah, may Allah make me like that, inshallah. Amen. 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 All right. So with that being said, Rami, feel free to jump in whenever you feel fit. But aside from that, let's go right in. So we dropped the video, you know, long story short, we got a lot of heat for it. Now, nobody gave us any type of credence or chance to speak. We didn't really have time to uh, address this, right? What we did was not a haste decision. We took the video down to really dissect it <clears throat> and decide if there was anything Islamically wrong with the video. And we really took time to reflect for the podcast and our intentions with the podcast. And that being done, we have some thoughts to say. Um, so Rami, do you want to go over some of the things that you have in mind? Or do the sisters want to give us your thoughts on the video? Um, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam ala rasulullah. I think just for the sake of, um, just for the sake of uh, structure and everything, inshallah, um, I'd like to hear the sister's thoughts on the overview of the video and Mahdi kind of who he is, what he says and everything leading up to the podcast. I think we should kind of go in chronological order. Okay. Sounds good, sister. Well, I'd give us your thoughts, Bismillah. Um, please do stop me if I speak a lot. I have a tendency to speak a lot. Uh, the first thing I do want to, I did take some points, important points that I felt I want to address. And the first thing that I want to um, address is the part, because this is affecting society a lot, right? Is he speaks uh, about women and the psychology of women and how we have the tendency to take into consideration our emotions and feelings before logic. Right. And I agree with that. And honestly, and yeah, I, I might say a lot of things that are going to be controversial. And many women are going to be, be very angry with me. 
you know, but I, I have to say it because the truth is the well, truth. Welcome, to the welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. Oh, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. The concept of women, right, being more emotional, it's in our nature. But of course, we are living in a society that is constantly trying to change everything that is natural right? Women want to be like men, men want to be like women, masculinity is on the decline, and men are becoming feminine, and you know, the whole story, right? But there is a big problem here, when Muslims, and I'm talking in general, when we put our emotions in front of our logic, that could lead to a certain level of kufr, actually. And I want to speak about something, this is very important, um, and I feel like many Muslims are going to attack me for this, but I'll give you an example where women put their emotions in front of their logic, in front of their submission to Allah, which is basically the definition of Islam. You know, in polygamy, right? Allah has given the right for men to marry more than one wives. And we live in, uh, and in societies before, men would marry up to 10 wives or even more than that. And Allah has limited that to four, but he's not prohibited men from marrying uh, more than one wives, and I think it's important that we that men understand because men always throw this. Oh, I'm going to marry four wives. I think it's important that they understand that they, that comes with responsibilities. And in fact, in the verse itself, Allah says that if you're not going to treat them equally, get married to only one. So if you're not going to treat them equally, you are prohibited from marrying more than one, right? If you don't have the financial status to treat them equally, and if you don't have the emotional strength to treat them equally, then do not marry more than one. But if you do have, then you can marry more than one. But women, they come up with this crazy thing. And I've seen it normalized where they say, I can write in the nikah, in the nikah, I can write that my husband cannot marry, get married to another wife. I don't think women understand what they're doing in this case. They are prohibiting something that Allah has made. Halal. Who gives you the authority to make halal what Allah has made haram? You know? This is a form of shirk. And because there's a verse in the Quran where Allah addresses the Christians and the Jews as um, mushrikeen. And so the Sahaba question about this and the Prophet ﷺ says, well, do they not make halal what Allah has made haram? So that is a form of shirk if we look at it from that uh, perspective. So a woman coming and saying, I'm gonna, it is haram or I'm gonna prohibit you from getting married again, whilst Allah has made it halal, in that concept you are making Haram, what Allah has made halal. So that is one way in which emotion gets in front of um, submission to Allah. Where if you allow your emotions to come in front of you, that could affect your submission to Allah. And another important thing that I that he spoke about was the promotion of saying sunnah that it is sunnah to marry divorcees, right? So. He mentioned an important thing. This is another controversial thing where many women, um, they find it easy because in today's society, it is easy to get divorced, right? So they just throw this word divorce everywhere and they easily divorce, right? And I learned from my mother, right? That you have to compromise in, in marriage, right? That is not everything is gonna come the way you want it. And today, um, women have become more and more selfish and the same thing for men, actually. You know, men are also the same, but women, we're speaking about women here, right? We have become selfish. We don't think really about other people. We don't think about the children, right? And Mahdi, he speaks a lot about the division of families, right? He speaks against divorce because he, I believe from what he says, experienced how it is to get married, uh, to grow up in a uh, single household, right? So you can see how detrimental that is to his mental health. And that's why he speaks against it, right? There has to be a reason. And we have to take his perspective into uh, consideration, right? So he speaks about um, not uh, against divorce because he speaks about how it is important for children to grow up with a male figure and a female figure in the household. The family is literally the foundation of social morals and ethics in the society. And that's something we have to understand. And that is something that the West, right, or the ruling elite are trying to eliminate from society in order that they control society, which also uh, in the terms of putting emotion, where we use emotion instead of logic, we are being controlled because we can easily be controlled by emotions, right? And when the society, when the elite, the ruling elite, use our emotions to control us, they can easily control us 
So they teach us not to use our logic, right? And that's how they put emotions. They teach us to put emotions in front of logic. Since women are more emotional than men, we get affected more easily. So when you're throwing this, um, when you are saying that women are, or that it is sunnah to marry women, and it is no more a taboo, right? And I don't mean look down upon divorcees, no. But what I'm saying is don't normalize it. Because when you normalize it, women are going to find it extremely easy to get divorced and the children are going to be affected, right? Because they're going to say, well, I'm just going to find another man who is going to take care of my children. Now, if you are in an abusive relationship and your children are being affected by that abusive relationship, then you have, you know, the excuse, right? And also this idea that, you know, the Sahaba married divorced woman, so it's, you know, absolutely okay. We have to understand that most of the divorced women that the Sahaba married, they married them because they um, divorced their husbands because they converted to Islam. So when they converted to Islam and their husbands, you know, they didn't convert to Islam with them, they would divorce them, right? So the point that Mahdi makes that many people misunderstand is that the, when a woman gets divorced, especially a woman who gets divorced, and this is the same thing for men. So when, what I say to about women here, I'm saying the same thing about men is when you, you're going from one marriage to another marriage and you're repetitively breaking your marriage and you know getting married, you're going from one man to another man, or in the terms of a rebirth, if you've had past relationships, and especially if you're abused, that will affect your present relationship. Now, I'm not saying men shouldn't go and marry divorced women. If you're going to marry a divorced woman who in the past has been abused, or she's going from one marriage to another marriage, you have to make sure you have enough strength and the mental uh, ability to handle such a woman. If she is abused, you have to understand she's not gonna put as much trust and effort as she put in her first marriage because she is traumatized from that, right? You have to make sure you have the effort, you have the capability to put in effort to treat her with more leniency and to understand her. And if you can't do that, don't get married to a divorced woman because you're just going to, she's going to divorce you again. She's not gonna, um, she's going to expect much more from you Right, and she's not going to treat you with that, which had, with as much um, effort as she would have treated her um, other husband with. And I think um, that's all. Ne Later on, I'd like to speak about segregation, but I want to give you guys a chance to speak as well and see your thoughts on what I've said. Um, inshallah, that's it uh, that I have. Inshallah. So first thing I want to say is I agree with your first contention that when you have a society that's just promoting single motherhood left, right, and center, and not just single motherhood but divorce and just breakups and and this whole hedonistic culture of if if ish hits the fan then just you know let go of the steering wheel don't really try hard to keep things going right so that's all society is doing so mahdi is coming from a point which we've now clarified that it's kind of antithetical to that it's kind of different it's like if society is just pushing this down people's throats to just get divorces let's now do the opposite let's not in a way shame single mothers but let's try to say it as it is so that we're not promoting it. We're not glorifying it. Yeah. Um, just to add to that quickly. Um, see, I, I, there is a problem with, with single motherhood uh, and, and divorce in general. That's why um, in some places, most marriages end in divorce. And it is an issue that needs to be addressed. But I think the problem here and the contention that most people had with it was not the fact that this topic was being addressed and inshallah corrected, but uh, the manner in which it was done. So, um, for example, I think the problem is generalizing all divorced women in the sense that it makes them seem like they were they're all bitter towards their towards men in general and um also put kind of painting islam in a way that makes it seem like islam is saying that these women are bitter and that's why there's no explicit hadith saying marry divorced women but this this is the issue now because this is something i didn't think about at the time because i'm like okay yeah you know that makes sense and i, I had a very superficial way of of, of hearing it and, and just viewing it myself but mm -hmm. The issue is he was basically saying that since there's no explicit reference to marrying uh, divorced women in a hadith, it's actually something that is not encouraged. And now this is a problem because mm -hmm. where, where, where did you articulate this from exactly? Because I can pull out a hadith that, that say the best way to ad adopt a child. And, and by the way, an, an orphan in Islam is someone without a father, not someone without both parents, just someone without a father. Mm -hmm. So the best way to adopt an orphan child is to adopt them and marry the mother. <clears throat> now, this includes uh, divorced women as well, if the father is not um, is not alive. So, mm -hmm. my point being that he painted it in a way that put all divorced women 
under the bus. And I've spoken to, to a few divorced uh, women as well, some of which were in abusive relationships, some of which were not. And um, they all had the same view towards this, which is, I'm not like that. So why is it being articulated in this manner? No. Okay. I would just like to say something, if you don't mind. Uh, something Before that I, I actually then, uh, gave her has a thought. Mm -hmm. of course, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, I didn't see. No, no, I said you go for it, and then Gabriel will go. Father, Father, go ahead, Smith. Go ahead. Um, one thing that Rami mentioned that was extremely important it should not um, paint all divorcees with the same with the same um, color. Like I said, there's. I'm always only speaking about reverts and divorcees who in the past have been in abusive marriages. And I'm not saying don't go and marry them. I'm just saying, if you're gonna marry them, you have to put in effort, right? You have to treat them in a different way or you know, with more effort than you're gonna treat a woman who hasn't been in an abusive relationship. But not only that, what he was saying and the way that Mahdi said it made many people believe that, he, uh, like Rami said, all divorcees are toxic or something like that. We have to understand that there are born Muslims who have done haram relationships, right? So you cannot just identify somebody as being toxic because they're a revert or a divorcee. I think when you want to marry somebody, you have to look at the individual, not identify them, oh, they're a revert, they're a divorcee, it means this, right? You have to look at the individual themselves because you can find a pious revert and a non-pious Muslim, right? So that that's a, that's an important point that I didn't mention. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. All right, Brother Gabriel. Speak your truth. Sorry, I, I finally let the second sister go. I think sister, she put her hand up. If she wants to go ahead, go ahead. Bismillah. Bismillah. I, I just thought uh, I'm agreeing. I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. All right. Zakallah khair. Taib. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, I'm going to try to. I guess we don't have to all agree on this platform. That's one of the most important things, probably, right? So let's, as the brother said before we even started, let's make it very organic. And inshallah, I'll try to give a few disclaimers as I speak. And the point for that is we have to understand the psychology of, of people, right? And I usually equate psychology with the fitra, okay? The fitra of human beings, right? And psychology specifically is like, you know, the way the mind thinks and the way the soul is connected to that. And a bunch of other important stuff that's not uh, relevant right now. But from the perspective of our discussion right now, we are discussing basically a video that has really triggered some people. I'm not going to say a lot of people. I, I'm going to say some people. All right. And we need to understand that. We need to really, when you analyze these kind of situations, as the sister rightly said, that emotions are going to flare up. And for men as well, like it, it is, there's this popular opinion that's how men are not emotional whatsoever. No, it's like emotional is not the main priority for a man, but he, men can be emotion. And a lot of time the emotions get, gets the best of them. All right. So you'll have a lot of men also reacting in a certain way. And I would say Mehdi is an emotional man. All right. This is my first thing that I'm going to say. I'll, I'll explain to you why. All right. And I'm giving here a disclaimer. I don't know the brother. He's made some videos responding to some of my videos. I really didn't watch them, but I want to be fair to the brother because he's not here. Right. It's like it wouldn't be right for us to just discuss him. And, you know, like, for example, he doesn't have the ability to to defend himself and all that. So I'm going to try to to be to do what I do, like what my job is, which is, you know, a counselor. And I come from the you know, the psychology kind of background so i'll try to analyze this issue from that perspective inshallah so we're, di we're dissecting this video that he's made that has triggered a lot of pe some people and caused some controversy and we've discussed it it was pulled off then there's been some you know apologies i mean it was quite of in the open right so we're making the, the objective of this video is to make it clear to those who want to listen I mean, I don't know. I don't even know if most of the people are going to get past the you know five minute mark of this video. <laughs> I mean, and that's reality. If you look at statistics, okay, at the videos, I mean, seven minute mark is like, man, you know, if people get past the seven minutes, it's like, boom, which means most of the people already might have turned out by now and already made some kind of idea as to what they want to believe. All right. And in, in the 21st century, we, we have what we call the TikTok attention span, right? And the TikTok attention span 
is is something that's that's conditioned into humanity, right? It's because of what we've been exposed to and what we flip through, and it's entertainment information and entertainment knowledge, which is very short, short bits. What that's caused is for human beings to kind of not be able to be tolerant to longer discussions. Uh, and longer doesn't necessarily mean quality, but I mean, you do need time uh, for you to be able to reach a certain depth in a discussion. And that is the sunnah of Allah. Allah could have revealed the Quran in one day. Okay. And indeed, he could have said, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Yani, the whole thing. Talk Allah, right? No. It took 23 years, okay, for the Quran to be revealed, okay? And this is what's called tadrij in Arabic, okay? Slowly, okay? Tanzil. It's just like one by one. Why? Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so that your heart, your fuad, your, the main part that is linked even to emotions and intellectual, you know, uh, to cognition, that it may be, you know, consistent and strong. Right? Because what happens if you don't have depth, you jump to conclusions right away. So, what I want to say is that a brother Mehdi, looking at some of these, uh, some of his videos and his past experiences, like he speaks from his personal perspective. Okay? He speaks from some form of personal perspective, what's happened to him. And he's quite clear about that. And I respect that, to be honest. I respect that he says, look, this is what happened to me, and I don't advise you guys to do this. He's spoken about polygyny and how to do it, you know, the right way. So I appreciate also a sister Wad, that, you know, she's like, you know, she didn't blast him. She said, look, there's a lot of things that he said that kind of make sense. You know what I mean? But it, it's how he says it. And that's what I believe that where the problem is. How he says things, he says them personally. Hence, it will trigger personal experiences from other people on the other side of the spectrum. You know what I mean? So someone who's kind of had a different experience or an experience of the other side of the spectrum, what he's had, he's going to be like, no, what are you talking about? Right? So it's going to trigger them and they're going to emotionally lash back. And yes, exactly. That's exactly why this video upset a lot of people. For me, not knowing Mehdi, just watching your guys' videos, I have an issue with what he said about the divorces and the fiqh perspective that he brought in. And I'll explain that. Other than that, I told you guys, I didn't really see a lot of problems. You know what I mean? But yeah, if you go now and bring other videos from the past and, you know, he's saying that he's done this and that, then yes, I could see why there would be a problem. But the video itself, okay, yeah, people can disagree. It's not about the video. It's about who he is or what he's done supposedly, or what he said in the past and how he says it. This is what I think needs to be uh, discussed. And Mehdi is, is very open that he's coming and he does, you can see in his speech, he quotes um, a lot of red pill stuff, right? He does that, right? He's, he's read a lot. He's not, he's, he's, he's not an ignorant person. People need to understand that. Okay, the more people are going to attack him personally and say this and this, the more they're going to discredit themselves because the guy is not an ignorant person. The guy is very well read. However, he's sometimes bringing in Quran and Hadith and kind of mixing uh, the two. And you got to be careful uh, with that. Okay, you have to be very, very careful with that. So I think that's what we need to understand. And it's about how he said it. Yes, I think it's going to trigger a lot of people. I don't think it was fair that people give the three Muslims heat for this, okay? Because they're, they're not facilitating the spread of his message. They are just interviewing him. If I, if I would see him every day on your show or every other day, I would say, man, brothers, what are you, you guys endorsing him, right? It's not correct. Got to be careful. You're endorsing. And I've told you that. But you guys had a discussion. I also said you should have challenged certain things that he's made. But, I, you know, I think it was very unfair for, for people to lash out at the three Muslims as if, like, you guys are responsible for what Mehdi said in the past. Not to mention that the brother says in some of his statements that what I've done in the past was wrong. I've done a lot of mistakes. You know what I mean? I mean, again, in all fairness, right, I, got, I want to give a disclaimer. I'm not defending him. I'm saying, what is, how does Islam approach the concept of Tawbah and a person who is making Tawbah 
or who's making istighfar or is trying to change his life. A man killed 99 people. It is one of the most cited hadith when we talk about istighfar and tawbah. Killed 99. Forget about hitting his wife or his child. He killed. And then he killed 100, the one less one. You know what I mean? And we know what happened. The angels measured the distance. He made hijrah. He tried to change his life and he ended up in Jannah. Right? What I'm trying to say is, forget about Mahdi. I'm looking, looking at what is Islam? How does it look like? So the brother said, you know, I've done a lot of mistakes, this and that. Can we just dismiss the guy and say, is this and that? Again, I would say it discredits people from the purpose of the discussion. We need to be very objective when we discuss this issue and address the problems such as sister, mashallah, you know, did to talk about, for example, yeah, the issue of divorcees and is that something good and how we would trigger women. I understand that it would trigger women. I understand. Um, but that's what I would like to say for the introduction, inshallah. All right. So first and foremost, Rami had his laptop crash and that's why he left. And I think the same thing happened again. So I'm going to try to get him on his phone if it'll be better. But aside from that, um, Angel or any of the two sisters, if the first sister that uh, didn't get to go on yet, if she wants to give her thoughts, do feel free. Sister Jenna. Yeah, Barakahu Fikum, Sunnah Rahman Rahim. I think overall the sister just said it right. Um, 90%, everything he said is just clear facts. I mean, come on, this whole dynamic between men and women, and um, I, I get his intentions. His intentions are pure. He wants to improve his self and, and the manhood and uh, leveling up to a high value man. I, I totally get that. And it's just, yeah, all the points were mentioned. It's about adab. If you get ilim, you, you need to have adab. This is the first rule when you are a talib with ilm. You, you can't present yourself on social media and especially guys. I, 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 I think this is a problem with the ego system. When you've been hurt, and this is not only for women, guys get also hurt and they also have emotional baggage from previous relationships. I mean, if we know the story of him, that's for another time, but he got emotional baggage and he is sadly also projecting his issues onto everyone else and right. i've got a problem with that because he's a very very intelligent brother and he got his heart on on the right side and he he shows us that he's just an intensive care bear you know what i'm saying just and we all got this a little vibe when we love something and we love islam and we love our brothers and sisters and uh, we all want to get to Jannah, all right? So people are different, we're all individuals and uh, we need to start to care for one another instead of bashing uh, each other with a sledgehammer, yeah? If you, <laughs> if you get me. And I think, um, stop ego tripping, man. Stop ego tripping. I know you've been hurt, we all been there. And if you really trying to make a change in this world, begin with yourself, as you always preach this. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta walk the talk. And now it's his time to correct some of his, yeah, behavior, <laughs> inshallah. Sister, what I look like she's trying to suppress herself. She had so many points. <laughs> um, you know, I've watched his videos, like I said, and I used to follow him on TikTok. And, you know, I understand what he's trying to say, right? And I think he, he, he's always speaking about the pros and cons of uh, and advising men on what type of woman to get, what type of woman not to get the red flags and all of that. I think he should put as much effort in telling men, teaching men how to treat women as he puts in teaching men what type of woman to get, right? Because you're going to get these emotional, egoistic men who are going to, misinterpret what he's saying right and who are going to use that to abuse an oppressed woman right and if we look at Mila Han's video and you know the, like I said the way he approached the topic was very harsh and I think that's just his personality right and he should 
kind of try and understand other people's perspective. I understand his perspective, but I think he should also be understanding other people's perspective. If he looked at Mila Han's experience and her um, perspective, she was in an uh, abusive relationship, right? And she, and like I told Fayad, uh, I hope I said your name right, uh, I want to speak about how Mila Han um, confused Rira with abuse, right? It's because of men that are egoistic and misogynistic right, that they would say that it is protective rira to oppress a woman. They would use protective rira, the concept of protective rira, to oppress a woman and say, this is Islam. It's not Islam, right? And there's a beautiful verse in the Quran where um, Allah says, Arijal qawamuna ala nisa, that the, I hope I said that right, that the men are maintainers and protectors of women, right? That to me, in my opinion, is rira, that the men protect that the jealousy should enable men to protect and enable for um, and uh, and maintain their women, right? So, what Milahan experienced, right, that caused her to define that abuse as rira, is abuse. Her mental health was affected by that, right? And when you maintain a woman, right, you don't maintain her just financially, you have to maintain her, make sure that she's mentally stable, right? You can't do something to her that's going to hurt her psychology. You have to make sure that even, you know, financially that she's stable. That is what maintaining is, right? You have to make sure her health physically and mentally and emotionally is intact, that you're maintaining that. That is Ghira, right? But she, because of her experience, defines uh, protective Ghira as abuse and as oppression. And that is straight out of oppression. There is no oppression in Islam. And I feel I don't need to elaborate on this because it's, it's quite clear. Unfortunately, people do take it out of context, right? And I do think that this is why the way Mahdi approaches um, certain topics is in a way promoting misogyny to men who are egoistic because this protective era, when it's turned into oppression and misogyny, it makes men who have egos, right? And who believe that this is Islam, it makes men oppress women. And we cannot deny the fact that there is oppression in culture. And unfortunately, we live in a society that is normalizing culture over deen, right? And that, that is something that we have to, um, to speak about. We have to uh, address the problems of that. And that's what I have to say for now, inshallah. All right. So I just want to let you guys know I really got to use the bathroom. So I'm going to cut this short so I can head out here. But um, bismillah, you all have hit my disagreeable nature. Fayed and Rami both know how disagreeable I am. So I'm going to let it come out. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak for Mahdi here. I'm going to actually stand up for him because I feel like he doesn't have a voice here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If anyone wants to throw dirt on me, go ahead. Feel free. But going back to what was said and what specifically Fire had mentioned that Mehdi said about the uh, divorcees, right? Like, you got to see exactly how he said it, where he's coming from. And then this whole thing about screening, which he didn't say, actually. He didn't say in our video but if you look more into his videos and you look more into like what he talks about this, he says specifically how important it is to screen your partner. And keyword partner, I'm just not, I'm not saying for men to screen the women, but women to screen the men as well. All right, so there has to be screening. And with this screening, you will see, okay, what, emotional baggage does this individual have because we all have emotional baggage let's be honest we've all been through trauma in our lives all right and seeing what emotional trauma or baggage this person has then you make your decision of like okay do i want to carry forward or not and i i honestly think the rational decision if you meet someone and you see that they have way too much emotional trauma uh, you're not you're not gonna take it upon yourself to save this person. Like you, you know, you make do it for them. You may be there for them, but to say, you know what, I'm going to suffer. I'm going to go on the cross for this person, and that's that's a joke, guys. I'm not being serious with that. But like, 
you get what I'm saying? If someone has emotional trauma, like you either are with it or you're not with it. If you're not with it, look, halas, like I'm gonna make do it for you. I wish you the best, but I think we should go our separate ways. Simple as that. That's why I feel that like, you know what? If, if Mahdi had a chance to voice it, he would. Now I agree that this man is a very strong individual in the way that he presents himself, what he brings to the table. It's, um, it does come from personality or not personality, but from experience, like Gabriel was saying, you know, so it, it's you either love him or hate him. But at the end of the day, if we can put our emotions aside and we see this individual for what he is, he's a Muslim. Like, yes, you know, he may have some things we don't like. He may have some things that, you know, it's questionable. He may have a past where we don't agree with it, but you know what? Everybody has something to bring to the table. They could be the worst individual in this world. They have something to bring to the table. Look, I was abused as a kid. I was abused for eight years of my life. The dude that abused me as a kid, he has a lot of things to bring to the table. There's still things today that I think to myself, I'm like, wow, what he told me, I'm actually using it today. Yeah, I don't feel any love towards this individual because of what he put me through as a kid. But still, again, like I'm not discrediting the fact that he still brings something to the table. So that's something that we all have to look at here. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, yes, he has a past. Yes, he's very strong in the way that he voices himself. You know, could he learn to uh, ease up? Perhaps. But that's uh, up to the creator to show him that and up to himself to see that himself. But I'm going to leave my point there. Guys, I got to go to the bathroom. It's... <laughs> It's serious here. This guy. <laughs> Take your time, bro. Take your time. Oh, so right. one thing I wanted to add to that is I understand that. And one thing that really it, it let me down, it was kind of disappointing, is the fact that people just disregarded every single thing he said because of his status with Muslim TikTok or how people view him. You get me? So I was speaking to Gabriel about this before. And it's it's almost like because of what people know him as, even though some people don't even know the story or anything, I would even say most people don't know. But because he's labeled, um, you know, an abuser or whatever people want to call him in the past, I'm not saying he is or isn't. But what I'm saying is because of that, you guys can't be out here saying that everything he says is wrong, is haram. You guys are, are shaitan for letting him on your podcast, for giving him a platform to speak. You guys are abuse apologists. Nah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think... Uh, Fadda, Fadda, Rami. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, there are a few things I, I do want to add to that. There is a level of slander, 100%, on myself and on, on other people. There's a level of slander. There is a level of taking it way out of proportion. And there is a level of, I see his face, I hate everyone who's associated with him. There is a level of that. Um, I'm not here to discuss that. I do think that is genuinely wrong. And there are people that looked at the video, that heard two words, and they just instantly like hate me, fight on it, like everyone uh, yeah. involved with us. Um, but I'm not here to talk about them. We know it's wrong. I, I'm not here to address that. I'm here to address, because I have addressed that already. I'm here to address um, two points. When it comes to what I think the genuine people are actually uh, displeased with is two things. One, where's the attention? And two, how is it articulated? Because it's, I do think, it, I wish Anahil was here to, to hear this. So maybe I should wait until he gets back. But I, I don't, I think it's kind of a superficial way of thinking to say that, um, you know, he has a past, he has things to bring to the table. I agree hundred percent, but that doesn't exactly take away from the fact that he has an attention on one thing and he articulates it in a very specific manner. And what I mean by this, to give an example, is he's only focused on benefiting men. And there seems to be more of a focus on almost really downplaying women in the sense that, you know, don't go for this woman. Don't go for, like it, he seems to be preaching not to marry divorced women. Now, this is actually very problematic. Yes, divorce is not something we should we should aim for 100%. We should fight against divorce happening unless it needs to be, uh, and unless it needs to occur if there's divorce or if there's domestic abuse, pardon me. Um, but the manner in which he does it seems to kind of just be, um, uh, I don't want to use any profane words, but, you know, just putting women down. And also, he's taking an attention on that. And the way he articulates it as well d- doesn't really seem to indicate that he... I mean, I don't want to speak for his intentions, but it doesn't seem to uh, indicate that he really cares about uh, women better, uh, you know, bettering themselves or really establishing justice or even an Islamic uh, foundation for his beliefs for women 
in Islam in general. And I think it's a lot of what he says. Um, it really looks at this whole um, Western woman as a concept and applies it to Muslim women as well. And as we know, those are just two, I would say, oxymoronic things. Mm. All right. Yeah. So first thing is, yeah. uh, I agree with most of what you said, bro. Um, there's two things I disagree with. One is you saying Western women are oxymoronic to Muslim women. Yes, in ideology. Yes, the way Allah has designed them. But that's not reality, bro. Reality is Western women are bleeding into the identities of Muslim women, whether we like it or not. So we can't be sitting out here being like, okay, we're going to use 1400 years ago rules. I'm not saying Islam is outdated. Islam's eternal. But what I'm saying is we can't be expecting that all women today and all men today are the way we should be based on the Quran and Sunnah because modernism has bled into us. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I disagree with the point that you said he's talking mainly about men and putting down women. Mm. Bro, if I have a market, if I have a demographic that I want to reach out to, I'm okay to specialize in that. I don't have to make vi uh, like advice for men, women, they, them, whatever these pronouns have today. I could just specialize on men. So for example, our podcast, whether we like to admit it or not, we started this to promote mainly to men, but obviously men and women both, but to make men proper, to make them on the Quran and Sunnah on the Haq, and to empower them, to make them high value men. It doesn't mean we're going to make videos not for women, but it's specializing for men. And it's candidly clear that for Mahdi, his podcast, his platform, whatever you want to call it, his IG, his TikTok that got banned multiple times, it's for men. It's strictly for mm -hmm. men. Can mm -hmm. women value from it? Can they benefit from it? Of course, but it's for mm -hmm. men. If it's for men, it makes sense that we talk about the pros and cons of certain demographics of women because it's directly targeted for men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, Sister I, Jenna? Uh, yeah, I got some points in my head regarding um, his approach. Um, Write it down. Brother Ram, he said... Um, that he made a clear statement and I, I wrote that statement down because I've listened to the podcast uh, yesterday and um, he said, I'm quoting, do not marry a divorcee even if you've been divorced yourself. And this boom, like, I was like, okay, okay, calm down, calm down, Janet. This is something like, all right, he, this is, I can't wrap my head around this mm -hmm. because I find it hypocritical, yeah, um, to say he is a man who got his own channel and he's trying to uh, leveling up men and, and manhood and uh, trying to dif differentiate between um, Tims and Alphas and Betas and every, every, everything. And on the other side, he makes videos, not yet... Uh, 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 downplaying your episode right now. This episode is 90% good, but um, on the other hand, he's attacking me the hand for... I've got a question for you guys. What's the difference between Maddy talking about his past online versus Mila Han is talk, talking about her past online? So I've, I've, I've recognized one thing. When he talks about his issues with his ex-wives, with his children, that the nuclear family is being destroyed and everything, and he wants to 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 challenge that, to correct that. How in the world are you making videos one half an hour, spending so much energy, your <laughs> precious time? What kind of time management is this? That you attacking a fellow sister? I mean, come on, this is. I'm being, being brutally honest. When I was 15 or 16 years old, here in Germany, we got so many Muslims on paper. So if you ask a Muslim when he's 14, 15, 16, 17, are you Muslim? Yeah, alhamdulillah. So what do you do? <clears throat> I'm, I'm not eating pork. So this is the common answer you get. They do not practice at all and nothing. But when it comes to women, especially sisters, when they are being half naked or not wearing the hijab or something else, they all point the finger on her, like you are doing wrong and not the same, same situation with him. And he, I mean, come on, Milahan is a revert. She's new into the Dean. How, why are you pushing this knowledgeable and, and 
she's really trying to get to get to know Islam and and she has this soft voice and really representing a role model for us women now in the internet and he kind of destroys it with with all his other statements I I, I think I, I feel that this episode is uh, one of the best uh, behavior he he, he would uh, he can display for himself but uh, on the other hand all this other stuff it's contradicted contradictive like so you're basically saying Mahdi presenting himself in our episode versus his other videos such as the one with Milan okay so I'm going to address one point first and foremost and then I'll pass it on to Gabriel or Rami so you mentioned what is the difference between uh or let me rephrase that why is Mahdi saying to men to not marry divorced and single mothers if you are a single father yourself right if I got your question so basically you're saying what is the difference between a man who is divorced versus a woman who's divorced, right? So I'm just going to speak on a biological and on average point of view that the way Allah has created us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, men can have multiple wives, we can, and women can't have multiple husbands, right? Us being fully in love with a woman, right? Loving her dearly, it doesn't get in the way of our ability to pair bond with other women simultaneously. For a woman, however, when she fully submits to a man, I'm talking energetically, physically, emotionally, it, like religiously, like spiritually, however you want to call it. When she's fully in on one man, she cannot even notice another guy. This is this is I can, I can give studies for that. Right. But the thing is, feminism has been telling women that we're the same men and women are the same. So women hyperimpose their imperative the way they think onto men. They think that we both think the same. Right. Meaning women, when they fully love a man when they're fully in, right, they, they don't really tend to notice other guys. They don't dream about other guys. For us, it's not too difficult. I'm not saying every man does this, but we can simultaneously be with multiple partners, right? Allah has made us that way. Because of that, my contention is that women think that if a man loves a woman, ideally, like fully, he shouldn't even notice other girls. He shouldn't even be with other women. This is, the, this is the point that Sister Wad brought up in the beginning, that, that feminism and all these isms in modernity, it's been telling men or it's been teaching women that there's a, a deficit or a flaw within them if a man wants polygyny, whereas nothing to do with you. There's no issue with you. The issue is just the way Allah has created us. But anyway, my point is, mm -hmm. if you understand all these you know, points, then a man who has had women, whether it be sexual partners like a wife in the past or just a wife even if she didn't sleep with her his ability to pair bond is not diminished and there's studies to right. prove this whereas for a, a woman if she's a single mother her ability to pair bond is diminished right okay. and my biggest proof is in the pudding a man could legally islamically be with multiple women so mm -hmm. by definition if allah said that we should treat them equally and that we are able to be with them then it goes to show that we could treat them as equally as possible being with them. Okay. Bismillah. Uh, do you mind if I jump in? Go on, bro. Everyone? Bismillah. All right. All right. Bismillah. Type. So let me, uh, I've wrote some points, so they're not really connected, but I, I want to make sure that I get them out there. First of all, um, Sister Wa'ad was talking about, she gave an example at the beginning. I wanted to address this, uh, the issue of the contract, the marriage contract and restricting polygyny there. And just linking it to submission. I think it's a beautiful way to start because in the end, we are all Muslims. By definition, we should submit to the rules of Allah. If we go back, and I think this is where Mahdi might be mistaken in that he's, he's with all due respect, you know, based on what he's talking, he's too red pill. He's not enough Quran and Sunnah, right? And that's what's happening to a lot of young men today because I told you many times, Red pill is a reactionary movement. Feminism, that, and that's the sunnah of Allah. People push, people push back, right? Allah says in the Quran. So the thing is, he's, it's a reactionary movement. But the problem is that a lot of the Muslim men, when they get into this, okay, they basically now start citing the studies and citing the books of these people as these are like ultimate truths. And as a Muslim, you cannot have that type of thinking. All right. So first point is with the, what Sister Wad said. The problem is with these contracts where the, you know, women start limiting the men. And not that it's only haram and it can lead to shirk. But subhanAllah, it goes back to what the Prophet said and what Allah says. Why did these people 
make halal haram. Who was it? It was the ulama. And sadly, some of our teachers today, they are the ones who came up with these ideas that you can put, you know, these kind of contracts or these kind of limitations in the contracts. Why? To appease sisters, to just because there's a lot of, you know, there was a lot of talk, a lot of complaining. So then they say, okay, let's, so they did. This is the reality. I mean, people are going to hate me, whatever. I'm not disrespecting the scholars. No, but not everyone is a scholar. You have to understand that. I'm not naming anything. I'm not saying anything. But the Prophet ﷺ said very clearly, so he can teach us. He said, they're ulama, they're people, they're rabbis, they're priests, made halal, haram, and haram halal. All right? That's when he, 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 he oh, that's the first point. Second point is, let, let me make it simple, okay? Because I think the main problem that we're discussing here and I would say, I didn't look at all the comments, but I would say it was probably the women who got upset were divorced women themselves. And again, there was a emotional, personal reaction. So he made his personal projection onto the issue and they responded in a personal matter. However, the three Muslims got caught up in the middle of this crossfire, right? Which has, again, I want to reiterate that they, these guys have nothing to do with this. You know, especially Rami got the heat and it's so unfair for the brother to get shot. It's not even friendly fire. It's like collateral damage, man, like proper, you know? It's like, and it's not fair. So what I want to say is the qaida of usul al-fiqh and fiqh is that everything in mu'amalat, by default, it is halal. All right? So if the Prophet ﷺ didn't say something specific, if the Prophet ﷺ didn't qualify something, it is by default halal. Okay? You have to understand, this is where Mahdi made a mistake. He's correct in saying that the, uh, the aqwal of the Prophet ﷺ take precedence over the af'al, the speech, uh, the speech takes preference over his actions. He was trying to use this point to prove that divorced women should not be married all right or that there's no recommendation for that and he's right in saying that there is a recommendation to marry virgin women there is a specific hadith about that all right no doubt but there's a context to the hadith when that sahaba explained why he married that okay so the context was that he had some children that he had some issues that he needed someone more mature and the prophet also said all right it's all good right so you see context changes rulings you have to understand that this is principles of a soul if we don't go back to these fundamentals issues we're just going to have personal ideas and discussions and personal anecdotes and personal opinions okay allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الله الله if you defer in something take it back to allah and his message all right so by default marrying a divorced woman it is halal or at least you can say mubah it's permissible Okay, because there's no specific thing to say, do it or don't do it or this or that. Okay, by default, it is, and actually it is halal, meaning do it. All right, is it recommended? Okay, that can be debated and this and that, whatnot. But you have to understand the Prophet ﷺ, he did it. Okay, if you want to go into the details and find all the context that you want and this and that and whatnot, I mean, then again, it's going to be very subjective. The Prophet said, let me marry. Okay, uh, even we know in the case of Zainab, there was a lot of controversy around her divorce and her till today, till today, the Orientalists are attacking this issue. All right. I mean, it was, a, you know, she was right away divorced and the Prophet said, right away, he married her. You know what I mean? There's your example of him marrying an immediately divorced woman and others. This whole like widows versus divorcees, which one's better? I think it's pointless. You know what I mean? I could bring in personal experiences to disagree with Mahdi. On, on, but there's no point because I'm going to bring my personal experience into this. All right. So bottom line, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with marrying divorced women. I think it's something very important to be done keeping in mind what's happening today. As a counselor, I can tell you that many women do not choose to be divorced. Okay, many women don't want to be divorced, but they do get divorced. Um, so you cannot, like I make the differentiation. When I deal with homosexuals, for example, there's homosexuals who put their hands up in the air and say, hey, we're proud 
and we want to make our own mosque. And, this, and these are the people that I would say, man, I will make the videos against. I'll explain why you're wrong and this and that. And then there's homosexuals who come to me and they say, man, I'm suffering. I need Allah to, you know, I need Allah's healing. I need help. Right? I'm not trying to equate homosexuals to this, but I'm trying to say there's people who choose to keep divorcing as we started and we talked about, right? There's women who are now used to divorce, divorce, divorce. Khula is one of my friends and dear respected sheikh. Uh, he said that now Khula in the Arab world, forget about the West, in the Arab world, is like changing your shoes. You know, it's become some like, yeah, I'll just get Khula. I just get Khula. I don't like this man. I'll just get Khula. You know what I mean? It's, it's not a joke. So some women have that mentality. So yes, those type of divorced women, you should be very careful of. All right? And then you have women who have been abused and divorced, and they didn't want to be divorced. Right? They don't choose to be in that situation. They want a man to love them, to take care of them. They can be the best wife because she can tell you, man, I suffered with this man my whole life. And even so, I didn't want to be divorced. I stood by his side and suffered my whole life. Yet he still threw me. And now when I meet you and I marry you, I respect you. I love you. Actually, that woman, because she has that low standard of knowing what a man is and then finds a good man, she's going to respect that man even more and sacrifice for him because she will understand what a good man is. She has something to compare to. Yes, that can happen the other way around if the man is not good and maybe, I don't know, her previous husband was better. These things happen as well, no doubt. But what I'm trying to say is like, there's, it's not just black and white like that. In counseling, every single case that I deal with, I have to write pretty much in my book and I have to look at every single reference and every single specific, you know, you cannot just black and white. Divorced women are all, no, don't marry divorced women. This is where he's gone wrong. He's generalized pretty much, right? And there's a lot of these women probably who are watching his video saying, I suffered. I'm still suffering. How dare you say that? You know what I mean? You don't know who I am. You don't know what I've gone through. So how can you say, oh, so am I written off? I can't get married anymore, right? Because I've been divorced. That's, that's where I think the brother has made a huge mistake. And he linked it to the uh, fiqh, which is wrong again, okay? Because by default, you can, and you can marry divorced women. And also understand, subhanAllah, a ruling can change depending on situation, right? Let's say, and they happen, it happened. Some men use it as a joke sometimes. It happened where sometimes the khalifa or the ruler would say something like, okay, we need men to uh, marry polygyny. He would like make it almost like a wajib, right? Why? Because there was too many women divorced or widows or alone or whatever. And this is the, the true leaders of the ummah before when they understood how to protect society and the family. So when the, when the hukmul hakim, when the hakim makes a hukum, okay, that becomes like a wajib, even if that thing would have been like maybe sunnah, unless it disobeys Allah and his messenger, right? Are you obliged to listen to your leader? Yes, it is fard. It is fard. So let's say the leader, may Allah give us, grant, grant us righteous leaders. I mean, if he says, okay, guys, you got to marry divorced women now because we have a problem and we do have a problem. Divorced women are a lot. There's more women than men anyway. That's why I keep saying polygyny is, to an extent, a solution to this problem, if done properly, if people know how to get things. And that's why you know people get upset. Why are you guys talking about polygyny? Because we're trying to teach people how to do it, or at least the theory of it. So if the Khalifa or the leader says, guys, you have to marry, for example, that becomes now almost like a wajib, Okay. You know, because if you have the ability and these women are suffering, there's a need to take care of, you know, people and so on. So the rulings change depending. But I think that's where he's made a mistake. That's why it triggered a lot of people who might have suffered and had personal issues in the past of divorce. And they're saying, I'm not that type of woman that's hopping from divorce to divorce. I'm, I'm insulted. You know, it's like saying that a specific culture 
are lazy or this or that. And that person might be from that culture and they say, I'm working nine to 12, man, not nine to five, every single day, seven days a week. How dare you say that I'm lazy because I'm part of this culture? So how dare you say that all women, divorced women are in the same category? Because a lot of these women, when they listen to the video, they're like, but I've suffered. I'm not, uh, I'm not hopping from divorce to divorce and looking for divorce and making it so easy. It's so easy to divorce today. I need a man. I've been waiting for five years for the right man. I, I've been, I didn't even want to be divorced and leave the man that maybe abused me or did all kinds of stuff to me. I, did, I was sticking by him. But here I am divorced. So, and then you're telling men that I have no more chance. I'm done. I'm 30. I'm 35. I'm 25, for God's sake. You know, some women. I'm beautiful. I'm young. I have desires. What am I going to do? I'll tell you what, women, that's the problem, the corruption of society also. Because men, it's easier for us to kind of move around, get married, you know, take another wife. It's much easier. We don't need a wally. It's, it is. It is. It's the reality, man, in the Sharia as well. It is the reality in the Sharia. It is easy. I've said that in my video before, and there's a reason why women are a bit more constricted because they are more emotional. They're easier to make, you know, these emotional uh, judgments so the, it's harder for women man it's hard and now when men are not marrying and marrying in polygyny when men are not moving around and you know taking more responsibility as sister you know uh, said you know then they're not kawam. come on let's be honest i've been saying this i know you know sometimes people say bro you're siding with the sisters and the sisters say we're siding with the brothers i'm quoting quran and sunnah I'm not, I'm trying to always say, قال الله, قال All right. So putting all that together. Yeah. A lot of these sisters who said, I'm not one of those that you're talking about. How dare you talk about it? I can see that they got triggered. And sadly, man, Rami got <laughs> caught in the crossfire. It's not <laughs> fair for the, it's not fair for the three Muslims to get smashed. Okay. This amazing episodes that you guys are putting out there. These amazing work that's been done. You know, to be like, you know, subhanAllah, this, this was going to affect the podcast, man. You know what I mean? This is not the way it's done. So that's what I'm saying. If we go back to Allah and his messenger, if we go back to these basic fundamentals of Islam, this qawaid, okay, what's halal, what's haram, what's mustahab, what's makro, what's this and that. Yes, okay, we will be able to understand that. And if we understand also that things, depending on circumstances, I believe we're in a time right now, at 21st century, Red Pill is saying, don't marry divorced women. Be careful, okay? I would say that Islam right now, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, there will be a time where a man will be responsible for how many women? 40 to 50, bro. Yeah, man. Do you understand what that means? Responsible, he said. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can say sisters, mothers, this and that, aunts, but wives, women. Res he said responsible. So where is the responsibility if people say, man, you know, leave them, don't marry. I'm not, again, I caution. Yes, there are now women. And I think, Fayad, you said the beautiful, I think that, that analogy is like Western feminism has bled into the ummah. I've been living in the Muslim countries for the past 13 years. I've been a counselor in the Muslim countries for the past 13 years. I'm not trying to make here the argument from experience or from, you know, but this is the reality. I've been an imam. I've been a school principal. I've been dealing with parents. I've been a counselor dealing. It's not like I'm just, yeah, I've been living there. You know, I, I've been dealing with these people. You know, some people go and they live in there. Like, what are they called? Like these, um, you know, expat like communities, gated communities, they never mix with the locals. I live with the locals, man. I live with the Bedus. I live with the people. I, they're my neighbors. They're my people. I eat with them. I traveled the world with them. I did schools. I built schools. I dealt with the parents. I dealt with all the policies, the legislation. I've seen the curriculum being injected with feminism and LGBTQ in Muslim countries. The curriculum being injected. I've seen it. I've challenged them. And when you challenge them, they boot you off, man. You know what I mean? So yes, it's bleeding into the ummah. is indeed. And that's why I would say there's a lot of women who are, yes, 
misbehaving. And yes, they are divorcing. And yes, they are very toxic. And those kind of women, men should be aware of. And that's what Allah says. Ah, good women are for good men. And bad, you know, right? Allah says. Right? Allah tells us that. This is the rule. Tayyibin and Tayyibat, right? This is what it is. So we have to be careful in not generalizing. But yes, there's still a lot of divorced women out there who are really good and who will respect the men, okay, because they experienced below that. And they're going to say, man, you know, I really respect it. They never chose to be divorced. They even would have stuck with that man who treated them bad and so on, but they didn't have a choice. They got divorced. And I think it's, it's the men have to take, we need to take these women on, man. We need to marry these women because they are alone. And I'm telling you one thing. A single woman is not like a single man. I'm telling you this, okay, from psychological perspective. Oh, yeah, we deal. I'm not alone in my counseling. People say, oh, you counsel women? Yes, I counsel women. About 70% of my clients are women. But I have Sheikh Abdul Ahab, Sheikh Shadi, Ibrahim Downey with me. Uh, we have, uh, you know, mytestgear.com. Yes, women are there. Yes, women, single women are suffering. And yes, a lot of them think about zina. A lot of them are addicted to pornography. A lot of them are suffering. A lot of them are now looking at all of OnlyFans. Because what are they going to do, man? They're stuck in a corner. I can never forget what happened when to our sisters in Iraq. Okay, when I read, I was crying, man, almost, man. Because the sister said, I have three kids. I'm prostituting myself to the freaking kufa because I have three kids that are starving. I mean, we can bring in more and more. I can give you examples. This is not stories. Okay, I can give you a full example. Problem is, don't, don't just put, the, every single case is different. The Sharia teaches, even when you give fatwa, every single case needs to be analyzed. It's not like, you know, sorry, man, even these online fatwas, man, a lot of the proper ulama, they say this is, you know, Everyone reads it, takes it, and instructs it, and just know. Every single fatwa, every case is specific. Every case in counseling, I need to listen for about 30 minutes, 40, an hour, 10 hours sometimes, you know, to be able to finally say, in your case, this is what I recommend. And that's what the Prophet would do. Sahaba said, yani people would come with the same question, you would give different answers. Same question, and he would give different answers. Why? And the Prophet let them explain. Because this person is like this. What's the best deed, Ya Rasulullah? And he would say to the person one thing and to another person nothing. Because he would say, for him, that's the best deed. And for the other guy, this is the best deed. You understand, right? So I, I, I say personally, uh, Mahdi's two red pill, I, I would recommend them to go back to Qawaid of Islam, to Quran and Sunnah, to do more Sira studies, studies of the Sahaba, you know, to contextualize things. I think as the sisters, I, I cannot question his intention, bro. I cannot, you know what I mean? I, I really, I, it would be very unfair to say that his intention was wrong. Okay, he's uh, from what I've seen. And I've only looked at one proper podcast, which is yours, what I've seen there. I know he has other issues, but I, I don't think he's a bad man. I think he has a bad past maybe. Don't we all? Okay, the only thing is that he's been out about it and exposed maybe and in on the light. I mean, if a lot of people would have a screen above their head to tell, you know, all the story of their life and what they've done, I think we'll be all in the same position. You know, I don't want to, to take it on the brother. This is my sincere advice to him and all the Muslims always go back to Allah and his messenger. Take it back to Allah and his message. Take it back. At least try your best when you say something, to try to have evidence for what you are saying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you immensely. I think, mashallah, you have a, a very balanced way of looking at it. Um, and I hope that uh, people on all ends of the spectrum with their opinions and so on and so forth would, you know, hear that out wholeheartedly and reflect on it, inshallah. Um, I do want to, I, I wanted to give you the chance to speak because you've actually wanted to, to speak for a while. And mashallah, the amount of points uh, really bears witness to that. Um, but I, I did want to comment on uh, Fahd, what you said before, because I don't think, maybe I wasn't clear about it, but I don't think you understood the points I was trying to deliver, the two points. So um, Muslim women and Western women are different in ideology. That's all I'm talking about. You, you agreed with that. That's all I'm talking about. Because by definition, if your ideology differs, your actions are going to differ. 
or you're going to suffer from cognitive dissonance and one's going to take over. There is a problem with, with Western ideology bleeding into Islam and Muslims, 100%. That's not what I'm talking about. In the case of Mahdi and what he preaches, I'm talking about the fact that he applies a red pill and a secular understanding to his argumentation and then implements that as a determining factor onto women. And the, he, the, for example, when we went live, he talked about it. He's talking about statistics of uh, women in, in the West, in American countries, and then using that as a determining factor and putting it onto Muslim women. But it's like, okay, yeah, maybe women choose bad men, but in Islam, the wali has to give the daughter or the sister or the woman's hand in marriage. So why don't you also blame the man? And in that, the, his entire focus was blaming the woman and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm talking about. And uh, also, this is another point. I don't think, maybe I wasn't clear again, but the problem is not specializing. The problem is promoting one portion of that specialized specialization. What I mean by that is, for example, he's not, he doesn't teach men to be men by getting women gifts and making them feel good. Or at least he doesn't do it abundantly in the way that he, he teaches men how to be men by like not marrying divorced women. And I don't think that's a very fair stance to have. And that's why, I, I mean, I've talked to him privately. I'm not going to talk about the private conversation, but I said basically the same thing that Gabriel said that, you know, put everything aside, red pill, secular stuff, sit with the Quran and the Sunnah and reflect on it alone. Um, and I've spoken to him multiple times, um, whereas other people may not have had that um, the opportunity. And me personally, the reason I have such a firm stance on it is because I've told them multiple times from my very first interaction to the very last one I had with them uh, that, you know, the way he says things are really putting people off. And every single time he agrees, um, but I just haven't seen much of a change in that. And that's why the focus, the attention and the articulation are two very important things that I think need to be looked at when anyone um, gives dawah or anyone preaches anything online, especially if they are Muslim. Last thing I'm going to say, you mentioned the podcast um, and that we started this mainly for men. And I agree. And I was very clear and open about this with, with uh, you know, the, you, you and Anhel and other people. And I'll, I'll be open about it now. I think we failed in some regard. I think we failed in the sense that we also talk about masculinity without talking about the other aspects that, that end up affecting women without talking about toxic masculinity and egoism and all of that. And I think that's a tremendous disservice. And that's something that I think, alhamdulillah, this is like the first step towards kind of realigning that to make it more uh, centered. As Allah says, he made us, um, uh, I forget the word I'm paraphrasing, but basically like he made us uh, a religion, a people, an ummah of like the, the middle path, basically. And I don't want to be too leaning on one side. Ummatun wasatan, yes. There's, there is, in fact, a danger to red pill. And we're going to talk about that at the end of the episode. All right. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. So, yeah, we need to talk about the danger of red pill, why it's an ism, just like anything else. Right. So we'll go into that at the end. Uh, Sister Jenna, I know you got a lot to say. You've been writing too much. So let it begin. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Jazak khairan for both of your opinions. I mean, Rami, you you put a big nail on it. Um, I think sometimes the Red Pill movement, to be honest, the Red Pill movement made me realize that Islam is the truth. Because um, I'm only practicing since two years now, and alhamdulillah, and the Red Pill movement showed me what it means to be, or to have Roma, the specific gender roles, and how it fits to um, repairing the society again. But if you've been raised upon Quran and Sunnah and you got an, an intellect and you kind of uh, connected to the truth path of, of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, it all falls into places, all right, what, what is my focus? All right, I have to seek knowledge first and then be humble upon that. So what is your goal? You have to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have to follow the path of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to control your nafs. You have to, you have to take care of your mental health. You have to gain sabr, shukr, taqwa, everything else. And then trying to be that high quality human being and to present yourself as a tool to humanity. And my problem with the approach of Mahdi is I think sometimes, how can I say, how can I put it? He's preaching about being a man and sometimes he's just too reactionary, uh, reactionary uh, in, in, in regards to 
being so tremendous wrong when he talks about he talks down upon women in in a, in a, in a specific way which is totally black pillish not even red pillish it's black pillish he is negative and he's not focusing on solutions rather than explaining why things happen that way and i think this is not a way we we, we can walk on we, we need solutions, real problems, real solutions. That's why I love Gabriel's show. Every time he speaks the truth and trying to really uh, correct our behavior by putting his behavior in front of how he speaks to people, how he gets, gets to the message and gets to these interpersonal connection with people. And I think this is a main issue with so many brothers and sisters out there, especially brothers uh, who are in the Dawa, because mainly brothers are in the Dawa. And um, we need to focus on that. And in the uh, previous episode, when you guys uh, went on, uh, went online with Hamza Tzotzis, mashallah, that was a brilliant episode. And how he tackles the issue of being a da'i and having timing and using soft words to change the mind of people. Because we are living in a time right now where Islam is being attacked from all sides and I mean people want to get to know the, the Islam but if people are trying to get to the knowledge they all see this crazy fatwas like brother Gabriel said and and when they go online they see him and he is babbling about some issues that are not currently real for Muslim women because as you guys said it's not easy for us to 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 ask our mother or our father Hey, we got we got stressed with my, our husband, and I don't know if it's gonna work out and and stuff like that. And feminism is also ruining it because every time as a woman I speak about issues upon women, I get attacked online, also in YouTube comment section. That's what, that's the reason why I don't comment at all. <laughs> and I get attacked and labeled as a fem Nazi just because I I want to take a message. Hey guys please humble yourself and give me a favor and behave in a way like be that role model you want to see in that world be that role model that you wished for when you was a child when you got abused when you got the, all those traumas and everything else in the end we are all servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah and not some men or women or this or that it's just we are servants and the question you have to Ask yourself every time you speak and behave and everything, is Allah pleased with you right now? And this is the question I'm, I'm getting in my head right now because my mom always told me, Janet, behave yourself. Allah sees everything and he hears everything. And this is something I, I'd like to pinpoint back, back to um, Brother Gabriel. Go to the Quran and Sunnah again. And... I don't know, take your time off, like two or three months, just focusing on your family, on your goals. He's always telling other guys to focus on goals and not doing the same thing. And I think it's sad because th this is not lost potential. He, he has to try to be better because we are all one body and we're trying to fix one each other, but in a very, very soft and, and merciful way. Yeah. That, that that was my two cents. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Bismillah. First and foremost, I really do vibe with what you said in terms of red pill did have a role into a lot of people's coming into Islam, into the deen, alhamdulillah. We are nowhere in any shape or way or form endorsing red pill as a substitute for Islam in the Quran and the Sunnah. We're not saying that. But what I'm saying is there's a whole demographic of people that have been lied to their whole life, right? And in the red pill sphere, they call that blue pill right and combine that with not being put on the quran and sunnah by their parents or family or, or relatives they've been lied to their whole life and society what do you think they're going to do they're going to tell them the truth no anyone watching this society is just going to tell you the opposite so the red pill has pieces of the truth do you get me so in a way for a lot of young men this is their first time that they found truth in anything that they've been given and brought up in their whole life right so you having this this truth in a world full of lies you're going to think okay everything is going to be truth in this right now the red pill it is 
there are truth. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny the red pill. Um, there's a lot of aspects of it which I don't support, right? Just like any other ism. The only thing we support here in this platform is the Quran and Sunnah. In red pill, there's a lot of things against marriage, you know, things against marrying single moms. Um, there's a lot of, about, you know, promiscuity, you know, we don't really support that. We're not going to talk about that, but it is powerful in the sense that it does bring gender dynamics and intersexual relationships into play in a society that is lying about this to men, women, and so on and so forth. Right. So I do agree with you in the sense that, um, you got a little bit of black pill vibe from Mahdi. I see why a lot of women would agree with you and a lot of men too. Right. I see why a lot of people would agree with you in the sense that it does seem kind of black pill. Right. However, I don't know him in the whole uh, sense that I keep up with everything he puts in the Internet. I can only endorse someone as much as they come on our platform. And even then, we as the three Muslims podcast don't endorse every single thing a person does, says or acts in their own life. We can only go based on what happened in our show. So in our show, he tried to not be black pill from what I know, and say, okay, if this is the way it is, don't be, don't take the black pill. Matter of fact, he even literally said, don't take the black pill. And then he said, run faster, climb harder, make more money, work on yourself, lose that fat, get some muscle, become better and become bigger. And when he said that, it's, it's in a way to like push men. Matter of fact, the first episode we filmed with Mehdi was on self-improvement, entrepreneurship, making money, finances, all that, right? We are the last thing on the list from Black Pill. We, we try to put men on a game. But, you know, if for some reason he goes on some black pill tangent off our platform, that's not really, you know, we can't really endorse any of that. But we can we can only be aware of what he does on our platform. True that. True that. Yeah, so I guess the last thing that I'm going to say here is um, we, we just got to remember that Mahdi has a, a very strong personality. The way he presents himself is very strong. Um, it's not going to reach everyone. And he's not trying to reach everyone. So Allah knows his intention best. And Allah will judge accordingly in the end as to whether his way of coming through with this is right or wrong. Allah will. But what I will say is that he's reaching certain individuals that need to be reached in that way. Just like I'm reaching certain individuals that need to be reached in a specific way through my YouTube channel. Like you look at my YouTube channel, um, you can't say it's 100% Islamic. Mm. You can't say it's 100% so, Islamic. Can, can I just interject and ask a question here? Yeah, of course, bro. Uh, yeah. Also to the sisters, maybe. Sorry. Um, are you familiar with my content? Like, have you seen my stuff, sisters? No, okay. Yeah. So I, I, I get... They, they gave a thumbs up. Okay, so You're basically... Start watching I, him now. <laughs> um, I basically get, always get attacked with, I'm only attacking females, I'm only catering to males, I'm chauvinistic, people have taken my face and made me memes out of it. Uh, it's been <sighs> over and over again, right? And, and every, I don't think there's any video where I don't say call Allah, call Rasul, anything like that. So, But this is the reality, right? People are going to always have this kind of reaction. As I said, I don't think most people listen to you know a lot of the things that we're saying. They don't go past the first minutes. That's the sad. And most likely, those are the people who are attacking as well. Those are the people who are going to lash back. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. What I, what I am concerned with is that this podcast continues, you know, no matter what people say, you know, and that you guys stick to Islamic principles because it is a huge, you know, it's a huge service. And as we can see here, Subhan, two sisters who are benefiting from this, you know, they don't have to agree with everything we're saying, but they've chosen to come here and to speak and they could just tell all of us off right now if they want to. We're not going to censor them. But, and by the way, there's a lot of women who are sending support messages. And a lot of the times when a lot of the sisters attack me, I just send like screenshots of these support messages. And I say, look, she's, she doesn't see it the way you do. Oh, you're, you're hurting women and women are not. And I'm like, yeah, but she listened to the whole thing and she has a different idea, right? So I think people just, you know, 
وقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نعقله ما كنا في أصحاب السير. They say, they will say people on their judgment say لو كنا نسمع if we would have heard ونعقله and we would have because you know there's a difference between hearing something and comprehending. Ah, that's where there's there's a block in the modern day feminist and even the sister, uh, you know, sisters who have feminism has bled into it. They don't listen. And the same thing with some of the men. They don't listen. You know, they say, I'm a representative of Islam. But when you say, but Allah and his message, you know, said this and that, uh, you know, no, 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 it's not like that. You know, they don't want to listen. Like, you got to listen. You have to listen and understand. Comprehension is key. I think the disagreement would be much smaller if people would listen and understand. Much smaller. There'll be still some disagreement, inshallah. There'll still be some disagreement, but it will be reduced. And a lot of this, this fitna and, you know, will be reduced. Like when I did the, you know, the knitting video. Yeah, I mean, people would have, you know, they say you could have said it a different way. Fine, maybe. But they don't understand where I'm coming from. They, they don't understand. I think uh, Brother Sajid Lippman, he made a response video and then Abdurrahim McCarthy. And I think their points were not that they're different. I didn't ask them to make those videos. I just woke up in the morning. I saw that there's like all this heat, you know, and these brothers, you know, who have gone to Medina, who have studied, who have, you know, are knowledgeable, mashallah. They decided to say like, you guys don't know where it's coming from. You don't know what he deals with and where he's trying to say he has nothing to do with knitting or Mufti Mank or anyone like that. He's personally necessarily attacking. You got to understand what the issue is. If people listen, a little bit, and they can see the perspective of the other person. Maybe they'll still disagree. I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people still disagree with Mahdi on some of the things, and definitely, uh, I think, even as the sister said, but I think it will be reduced, and we could remove some of these problems. And to finish my point off, hmm, sorry, bro. This, no, you good, brother. You good. <laughs> to finish the point, all right. This is to like all the people who were just tripping out. All right. Y'all need to get your emotions in check. And I say that with love. Y'all need to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your peace. Because listen, us apologizing, someone apologizing is not going to calm your emotional turmoil. If you are feeling emotionally reactive because someone says something listen you need to take a step back and you need to analyze why you feel so emotional about this there is a reason why you feel so emotional get to the root make dua pray salah go to the creator first and then you know what if you still have an issue reach the certain individual who said said thing in private and then have a discussion so that you can have clear understanding versus leaving a comment on a YouTube channel or on a TikTok or something like that, basically spreading fitna. And that's it. I'm going to leave it there, bro. Rami, you got anything to say, bro? Because I, I got something to say. Yeah. Um, I want to get this out quickly. It's very short. Then I'll, I also want Sister Rod to, inshallah, end this off as well. Um, after you go, of course. But um, Anil, you said something like, um, you're sure that your, your channel isn't all Islamic and all that. But, you know, I want to be fair to you. I wouldn't compare you and your channel to Mahdi and his channel or to Gabriel and his channel because Mahdi and Gabriel, as far as I know, were born into Islam or not, but um, Gabriel wasn't, but he's, he started his platform, I believe in the Islamic context. Um, and Mahdi was born to Islam. They are Muslims on a Muslim platform and have been, I believe the entire life of the platform. And um, what Gabriel preaches is Quran and Sunnah. What Mahdi preaches some Quran and Sunnah, I would say majority of it is not. You're a revert, may Allah bless you immensely and grant you many years in Islam and allow you to be a beneficiary for uh, Islam and the Ummah. The non-Islamic content on your on your channel is probably from your jahiliya before you were even a Muslim. So I wouldn't, I don't think it's fair to make that comparison. But I, I at the same time, I don't want to diminish your point. I think your point was beautiful, and may Allah bless you for it. Appreciate it. Of course, Just, and bro, here, bro. If you want to show. I was going to say, just to add to that point before you go, Fire, mm -hmm. uh, everyone basically comes to understanding and uh, 
awakens at their own time. Even born Muslims. Like, look at Fayyad. Look at yourself, Rami. Like, y'all are born Muslims, but it wasn't until later on that you guys woke up and started actually being true Muslims at heart, not just by name, you know? So it's like, look, I'm not, I can't speak 100% for uh, Mahdi. I, I said I'm, I'm going to defend the guy because he's not here. So I did. But at the end of the day, I can't speak 100% for him. And like, bro, we don't know. Again, like, Allahu Alam, God knows best his true intention, his journey, his evolution. So it's like, you know what? Maybe, maybe he might know exactly uh, the Quran and Sunnah and he might know the red pill, but he's choosing to, you know, say only the red pill stuff to reach out to these people. But then again, maybe he might not know everything 100% in depth. So that's, that's where it goes back to what Brother Gabriel said, where it's like he invites him to further his research and studies into the Quran and the Sunnah and all that. So I feel like, I'm, I'm just ended there because I feel like we're all pretty much on the same page here. I want to, yeah, so that's why I want to give first and foremost one shout out to Brother Anha who decided to take down all of his videos down from his YouTube channel because they're Jahiliya and they're un-Islamic and he's going to demonetize his videos. Now I'm playing. He's not going to do that. I want to give a, my second shout out. This one's legit though to Rami. First and foremost, bro, I want to give a shout out to you because you have genuinely put the seed in my mind and i'm pretty sure on house mind too that we should get on islamic education and studies right and therefore me and on have enrolled in uh, and i don't say this to boast or anything but me and on have enrolled in uh an, ed- an educational institution that rami is a part of shout out to i3 to get our islamic education up alhamdulillah <laughs> Amen. All right. Jazakallah khair, may Allah bless you both. Uh, everyone here immensely. Shout out to all you uh, lovely people, mashallah. And also, um, Sister Wad, unless there's very quick points anyone wants to get across, I think Sister Wad has not spoken in a while. She actually. Um, so I just don't want to, I'm not going to take long, but I just want to highlight a few points, right? So we said that, um, and I. The point that you guys came, some of you guys, uh, was that he was directing his um, videos to certain target and he's specializing in a certain um, field, right? I think when you're specializing in a field like this, that could easily be misunderstood. And I said this before earlier, that as much he should put, he puts a lot of effort in telling, advising men on which type of women to get, which type of women not to get, the pros and the cons and all that. I think he should put as much effort in teaching men how to treat women, right? Because like I said, men are going to misunderstand him and they're going to um, use that to oppress women. And because of the way that he says it, men are actually going to do this, believe me, right? So he should put as much effort in doing that. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that um, Gabriel spoke about the scholars, that it is the scholars who are putting... um, this idea to the sisters that you can write in your contract, right? And they are sugarcoating Islam, basically. No, she got cut off. Oh, we lost her. Man, this reminds me of uh, if you guys watched the episode with Zach, the ex cartel leader, <laughs> when it kept lagging out. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Just sister uh, Janat, maybe. Bismillah. So I kind of lost. My train of thought, just like Angel, every time does. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, putting me on blast. MashaAllah. <laughs> <laughs> Up one, yeah, Habibi. Up one. Oh no, sister. Yes. Sister Wad is pretty much more into this topic right now. So, inshallah, she may be back on time. Inshallah. But- C- can I ask one thing, though? I'm not sure. I don't know the sisters, but just to understand uh, their. And I, I apologize, you know, but it is important sometimes for the viewers to, subhanAllah, you know, people discredit. They'll say, oh, your sisters don't understand. Your sisters don't know. Your sisters, you know. So I'm not sure if the sisters are have children and all that. And, you know, uh, they're they're married. That's important, right, to to understand where you're coming from. Uh, like, you know, like I'm married. I have kids. When I speak, I speak understanding, you know, the family dynamics, like going through it and so on people love to discredit you on every single 
point that you can make. They'll say, oh, you don't, you've never seen it. You've never been through this or you've never. So I'm not trying to say open up your personal issues, but uh, people, you know, people need to understand that like a lot of us have gone through certain things in our lives. A lot of us are married, have gone through, you know, that we have children, we have families, you know, it's not just a, a bunch of kids speaking online, you know, from, from no experience, right? Even though we should keep our experiences so they're not subjectively affecting our, our point. Um, we, people need to understand that like a lot of, we're very diverse, you know, like a lot of us have a lot of diverse experiences uh, in our life, you know, this, you know, people say, oh, this is just the Arab way or, oh, this is just the, the single way. Oh, it's easy for you to talk. You're not married. Oh, it's easy for you to talk. You don't have children. Oh, it's easy for you to talk. You are married. So you don't know how it is to be single. So we have here married, single, divorced. We have everything, alhamdulillah, you know, and we have men and women. So we cannot be accused of, oh, you guys are, you know, like subhanAllah, everyone spoke. There's no censoring, you know, bismillah. I, I just pray that people who watch this, they can just pull back for a second, just listen, understand. The objective of this episode is not to defend Mahdi or to accuse Mahdi or to give the Mahdi haters, you know, their, you know, oh yeah, alhamdulillah, you know, that. no, it's nothing like that. We're, we're trying to get you guys. Man, we have a problem in, the, in our community. We have a lot of problems, but there's also a lot of good. So, so we're trying to, help and to clarify so that the three muslim podcast can move you know you guys are gonna have a lot of bumps in the future inshallah this is i'm telling you it's gonna happen <laughs> all right you just gotta be able to you know to get good suspension uh, on your on your way and just you know absorb as much as you can of that and like transform it into energy that's gonna drive your podcast a lot of this Hatred, you know, and, and one thing I always, you know, uh, my wife said, you know, it's like, just, just sleep over it, you know, just take it easy at the beginning, don't react, you know, no knee jerk reactions, because that's what you guys got, you guys got some knee jerk whip reactions, right? So whenever you just got to kind of take it in, let that energy sink in all that, and then just boom, put it out there, proper positive, teach, you know, just preach and teach, you know, you got to preach and teach you know and if people want to learn alhamdulillah if people don't want to learn alhamdulillah you know i've been doing this for uh you know quite a long time i think the first video that i put out there is 15 years ago but i benefited from your stuff you know i i i i benefited from your podcast so this is this is it man that's the goal Allah, man. to benefit from one each other so you you spoke you spoke every every person got this special angle and i think this is crucial to get together to let let one speak and speak the truth yeah, i'm not misquoting myself but you get what i'm saying and this is the beauty of having a conversation on a level on a basic level of respect and and ex tolerance like i tolerate your opinion even if it's not mine, but I let you talk, I let you get your point done, and we come to a conclusion where everyone gets a share. And I think that's beautiful. Mm. I, really like mm. I think I think the sister is speaking facts because Allah gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason, right? right. I also want to give right. uh, my last shout out uh, to Brother Gabriel for coming in in all black. Mashallah, Ooh, looking good. Looking proper, so you guys, boy. You guys made it this far. <laughs> Comment down below, hashtag all black. I want to give another shout out to Uncle Al Romani for coming through with uh, the advice and the nasiha whenever we need him. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. I'm an uncle now. Huh? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to give a shout out to, uh, to, to Angel, man. I'll tell you guys why. Angel, he's, he's the most dangerous, man. He's, he's always like, he's so composed, man. You know? And when he speaks, he doesn't speak too much. But it's like, you know, and I know he's, he's new to Islam. Dangerous, bro? He's dangerous. <laughs> he's dangerous. Like the, the most, the, the most, you have to always be, you know, the, the person who speaks the least, bro, is the person who's got the most. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, like, the Sahaba said that the Prophet ﷺ had, like, what's called comprehensive speech. You know, kalam, like, it's like, it's like, 
it it kind of there's a lot set, set says a little but it has a lot you know and, and the process would be very quiet he wouldn't be like you know we speak a lot I, I, I speak a lot man like if give me a mic I'll talk for two hours you know but Angel is like he sits there you know excuse himself to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> or to eat or something <laughs> or make his food or something but man he's like you know i, I like that i like that so Bro, shout out to him just oh, to go ahead yeah. my brother that's the brothers i'm not like that all the time though <laughs> allah knows best too allah knows best he, he's like that when it matters mashallah bro yeah, yeah, yeah. it's funny because sister Wad, when she left it looked like we were just all going in bro heated <laughs> she comes back we're all smiling <laughs> I am so sorry, guys. I had a few problems with my other phone, so I'm using my sister's phone now. Awesome. Tell me what I missed, because I'm sure I missed all the juicy things. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we uh, are giving shout good. outs. We're giving shout outs, giving each other Sh- hugs. Sh- hugs shout, shout out to... Shout out to Sister Lena Khalid for allowing you to lo- use her phone. Because <laughs> <laughs> the name is there. <laughs> we we'll give it. So, thank, thank you, sister. She loves you guys so much. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, thank, thank, thank you. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. All right. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. All right, Shabab, if that is all, let's wrap it up. All right. Any, exactly. many, many, anything? I mean, uh, my sister, what just came on? Maybe she wants to uh, say anything like last words? Yes. Mm-hmm. Please. That would be uh, polite. Um, I was just thinking about something that. Um, uh, of the scholars, because this is something that I note, noted down, it's very important to speak about because it's something that is affecting a lot of Muslims. Unfortunately, Darul Uloom and many of the scholars have, the reason why there's so much fitna in Islam is actually because of the scholars. And there's actually a hadith in the um, Quran, uh, the hadith where the Prophet says that, a fit, the, that he is afraid, a fitna that he is afraid for, that is bigger than the Jal, is that is the scholars that scholars will begin to corrupt the religion and that's what we're seeing right now when you and you see these muslims who blindly follow these scholars they're saying things like oh my sheikh said this your sheikh said this my sheikh said this so it's right and you're having all of this, this um fitna okay. going on sorry sorry i need and i need so to interject is- here uh sister what sorry uh the the ahead, hadith ahead, no the, yeah the hadith the process him said to be aware of subhanallah the arabic word is like speakers okay uh yeah like there are some ideas about scholars but like that can be but there's one that speaks people who speak they speak a lot speakers public speakers and this is what we see today because again i want to you know because we as muslims like the ulama these are uh they are the inheritors of the of the of the nba and also the ulama are like you know as the prophet Sallam said like the you know the the light of the moon over the light of the stars you know right like um i mean th- sorry yeah like th- basically there's many a hadith um i don't want to mix things but where the ulama are are the ones inna ma yakhsha allah min ibadihi al ulama the indeed the true ones who fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ulama and the ones that you're talking right now, the hadith that you're mentioning, as far as the, the speakers, the public speakers, people who are out there, uh, sorry, like celebrity sheikhs, you know what I mean? That sometimes causing a lot of issues. That's, I just wanted to make that because we, we love, we love scholars. The scholars uh, are scholars. I, I get the point that you're trying to make. It's also the Quran verse that speaks about lahwa hadith. And if we look at uh, it linguistically, we look at the root of the word, it's hadith, uh, hadith that is delusion, um, no, speech that is delusional. So we even get it from the Quran that speech, or anybody can speak about something that can easily delude people, whether it be the scholars, whether it be public speakers, anybody can do that. But I, in particular, the reason why I say scholars is because many people, they say, oh, he's a alim, it means he's correct, right? And I know there's a practice where we follow um, scholars without actually thinking so they can say something that country can and we will follow them because they are alims and i had a, a girl tell me the weirdest thing she was telling me how even if a scholar makes a mistake when he's speaking about something he will get rewarded for that 
right? Because I was calling out a scholar for something and she was like, no, you can't call him out. Uh, he's going to get rewarded for that. And I said, you cannot follow a scholar. If you are knowledge about the Quran and the Sunnah, you see somebody speaking against or contradicting the Quran. We make mistakes. We're human beings. You're supposed to correct that. Not say, we leave it. You'll get rewarded for that. Halas. You know, we can't do that, right? So we have to, we become scholars ourselves. Every Muslim should go on the path of gaining knowledge, right? And we should help each other. And we should, when we see somebody doing something wrong, even if that person is a scholar, the thing is we say, oh, it's kind of embarrassing to um, correct a scholar, or I don't have enough knowledge to correct a scholar. If you come across something and Allah has given you the wisdom and the hikmah to understand that and to recognize what the scholar is saying wrong, you should correct the scholar because the scholar could be misleading many other people. So that's what one thing that I wanted to say is that we should hold scholars accountable because when we don't, then scholars, and there are corrupt scholars, we can't say all of them are good, and that's just the dunya that we get, right? We have to hold them accountable, and that's about it, yeah. As well as having a club, because we have all these young guys on Instagram, and they have no club whatsoever, and I've dealt with these guys personally, right? And the way that they propagate Islam actually makes people turn away from Islam, and they don't recognize that because they think extremism, you know, and forcefully bringing these people to Islam and insulting them that's making them like Islam and it, it, there's no logic in this. So we have to teach when we are teaching um, our fellow Muslim brothers and sisters to become, to become alims and dies. And in, in, in truth, in reality, we are all dies. I wear the hijab, I am immediately resembling Islam, right? I am representing Islam. So I am a da'ya. People look at me, they see Islam. So we have to be careful of that. And, and that's what I want to say. That's all that I have to say. Uh, Mashallah, was a good reminder. All right. Jazakallah khairan. May Allah bless you all immensely. Um, I think it's time to wrap up. Inshallah, this has been an amazing episode, and I appreciate all of you being here. May Allah reward you all immensely and allow us to do more of this, inshallah. Amen. And with that being said, if there are no more final words, Allahumma atina fid dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab al nar. Nar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Women marry men in the hopes that he will change. Men marry women, hoping she will never change. She can stay as beautiful, forever like that, as agreeable and nice and so on. Women marry men, hoping that this man is going to increase in wisdom, in intellect, in finances, in his career, in everything. But they don't communicate it to you. So you go into your logical man brain and you're like, oh, wow, this is an amazing arrangement. Not realizing that she is banking on you becoming someone else. And if you don't, you are on a time bomb. Mm -hmm.